Hi, this is Steve Caldwell, and today I'm going to show you how you can use your bone box as a MIDI switcher. The diagram here depicts a typical scenario where a musician on stage can use his MIDI keyboard to remotely switch to one of two offstage synthesizers. In this tutorial, we'll set up the project file in Bone MIDI Translator Pro on a computer and test it there. We'll then upload the project file to the bone box and set it up for execution. First we go ahead and create a new project file <clears throat> and the first thing I usually like to do is set up some generic aliases. That way when you move the file up to Bonebox you can reassign those aliases to different devices if they're different on the Bonebox. So we've set up the input alias and now we're setting up the aliases for the two devices that we're going to set on the Bonebox. I'm just assigning them here to Bone MIDI Translator 1 virtual ports and Bone MIDI Translator 2 virtual ports, but they'll be reassigned on the Bone Box. Now it's time to set up presets for the different outputs. Each preset will have a different defined output port. For Synth 1, uh, we're going to go ahead and designate that as the Synth 1 output alias, and then we'll create a preset for that. This one will set up as any 3-byte incoming MIDI message. We'll set it so any incoming message with 3 bytes and we'll assign variables 0, O, P, P, and Q, Q to the incoming message. The outgoing message will be the same thing, so the message will be unchanged. Now we'll duplicate that translator to save time and then we're going to change it for any 2-byte message so it's a slight modification. In this case we'll only be using the local variables OO and PP. Finally we'll go ahead and do it one more time for any 1-byte messages. Again we're going to duplicate it and then change the incoming description and then just take out the variable PP because we're only going to be using OO. Okay so now to save time all we really need to do is duplicate that preset for Synth2, rename it, and then we'll assign the output for that preset to go to Synth2 instead of Synth1. Now we need to define a preset for the actual device selection. This preset will actually uh, select either Synth1 preset or Synth2 preset. So once you set it up, we need to set up the translators. The first one will select Synth1. Uh, we'll capture an incoming message. And then we'll just click on that. It pulls it over into the incoming trigger. And then the outgoing action will be to uh, enable preset or activate preset synth1. Note that I've also checked deactivate other presets. Now we'll duplicate that translator for synth2. Uh, the outgoing action will actually activate the other preset. And of course we need to use a different incoming trigger to get to synth2. So we just again use the capture MIDI and click on the incoming message. To prevent this preset from getting deselected we need to make sure we check it as always active as shown here. Now let's go see it in action. Pressing the first button as you can see select synth1. Pressing the second button select synth2. Pressing the first button again takes it back to synth1. Now that we've finished with the project, we need to log into the bone box and upload it there. Click on Browse to select the file on your local computer. Once you see the file name, go ahead and click Upload the Project File. Once the file is uploaded, just hit Select to start it. Notice that you'll have to assign MIDI aliases now that it's up on the bone box. So you just go to the uh, alias MIDI setup and select the device names that you're going to be using on your bone box. Of course, don't forget to press save. If you want to control switching of multiple hosts or applications using your MIDI device connected to Bonebox, then check out our next tutorial, which will be coming soon. 
As always, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach us at www.boehm.com.